YouTube, how are you all doing? And welcome to the sound live. We're in a heat wave here. It's going to be 99 degrees in Oregon today. How y'all doing? Today with me I have Evelyn Holland. Evelyn is a singer, songwriter, and guitarist. What are you up to these days, Evelyn? I'm continuing progress on the, thir the third record. I just, I just tracked some bass yesterday. I have <laughs> Kyle Walls. Hey, Kyle hey. is a singer, songwriter, and musician, guitarist. Kyle, what are you up to these summer days? Last week, uh, I picked up my guitar one morning and was going through some songs I'd written in the last few months. And there was one I was, I liked it when I wrote it, but then I, I haven't really liked it. I was like, eh, maybe I'm going to take that one off my list of ones that I might do. For some reason, my fingers started playing it in a way that I really, really like. So I recorded a draft. I, I shared it with my patrons and stuff, but it was it was cool that I sat down and I use uh, session drum tracks for my original music and stuff. So I found some drums I liked. I got everything arranged really cool. I added some bass and uh, it, it was fun to uh, sit down and record again because it's it's been a been a little little while since I recorded something new, you know, studio wise. So that's fun stuff. All right, so we're gonna do the odd one next. Kyle, why don't you introduce us to your pick? What are we gonna be reacting to next? Okay, so we have Night Wish, and it was maybe the the first or second Night Wish song I've done. I've only done a, a I don't know, like like three or four, and and I think half of those are at least with you. Um, you, I got a lot of suggestions from people and, um, with Nightwish, there's been different singers in their history and I need to specify, I do, do not know a whole lot about Nightwish. So when it comes to speaking about their history, I am not a very good nor knowledgeable person for that. I'm just going by what people have told me. Mm -hmm. So this is their singer, Annette, uh, from, I, I think the an earlier part of their history, I know she is before Floor. With this song, this is Annette, and the song is called Amaranth. And this is a comment or suggestion that I received and share with Matthew, because I know he's down with Nightwish and oh, stuff. Yeah. And, and we always have fun reacting to him. I enjoy getting to hear, you know, some, some different music and stuff. So th this is always fun for me to check him out. Um, so I'm excited to hear this because this is the one singer that I'm still brand new to. So awesome. this is exciting. I remember hearing the the first singer of Night Wish years years and years ago, and I wasn't I can't can't say I was a fan of the band then. I haven't really, you know, recently checked them out. So may, sometimes you know you don't hear an artist for years, and then. You, yeah, you hear them years later, and you're like, oh, well, why didn't I like it back then? <laughs> I mean, that can happen. You know, tastes change. Make sure you like. We want to get some more people in here to see this. This video has over 100 million views. This is going to be some good stuff. Are you guys all ready? Yeah. Woo, yes. All right, so without further ado, Musicians Panel reacts to Night Wish Amaranth official music video. Here we go!
I should have recognized the title because I've definitely reacted to a live version of that with Floor. Um, yeah. I'm not sure if it was Vakken or if it was Wembley or both. I honestly don't remember, but I've definitely heard Floor sing that. And um, so it was so it was so interesting to me. Like Annette's voice, at least on this song, was kind of bright and poppy. It was like, yeah. it was like, I metal Madonna almost. If you, I, I mean, I, it, it's it, hard to put it into a, a into a, you know what I mean. But it was like really bright and shiny, and the way that they did the harmony vocals, like on top, and like the really high like descanty stuff at the end, right? It was like totally like. Soprano, but like like a like like a pop soprano. Whereas you know the when I heard Tarja, she was at least on that one song, she was much much darker, more operatic, big diva sound, right? And then Floor, of course, and I've heard her do a whole lot of songs, and both those two only heard her do one, so it's not fair. But I've heard do Floor do the entire range of it from opera to that right broppy, bright poppy, and I don't know, I for. For the studio recording of that man, I, it felt like it felt like I don't know, nineties, late nineties. I don't know. I don't know exactly when that came out. I, I think so. Yeah, I was gonna say the vocals re- kind of reminded me of um, the first singer of the Gathering, actually. Mm, mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what uh, what's her name? Annek Annek von Gerksbergen, or I think that's yeah. how you pronounce it. <laughs> her voice is really bright and shiny like that too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like, and you know, it's just it's outstanding to me when you take that really deep, dark music that the drums and the bass and the guitar are making, and then you put the orchestral, the choir, and, you know, the pretty piano keyboardy things that Tuomas is doing, um, you know, both production-wise and also adding when he's doing a concert, um, you know, and then you have this bright female vocalist or dark female vocalist, either way, but, you know, yeah. to have that high-pitched vocalist on top of this deep, dark music, it's just, it's so nice, um, and it makes it so that the vocals don't have to be as loud decibel wise because the pi- because pitch wise there's not as much music up there right in the melody range more it's more, more most of it's down below the volume and so you know what i mean then it's like the the high pitched female vocals can just kind of rise to the top of the mix you know what i mean i really like that yeah no i mean cuz the i mean the instrumentation being a little on the i guess uh, low mid bass end of things, and that the uh, her vocals being more on the treble, uh, high mid end of things, where it works perfectly mix wise. Yeah, I like that. What do you think, Kyle? Yeah, uh, y- you mentioned you know that that poppy sound. That that's what I was thinking of too. I was thinking of uh, like Evanescence and stuff. Even though you know the the sound isn't the same, but to me, era wise. You know, um, and I did what when you mentioned when the song came out, it was released in, in 07. 07, okay. Yeah, so yeah. I, you know, and I, um, well, it was curious, you know, like if, you know, Evanescence may have uh, been an influence or something, but I, this might be the, the first studio version of a Nightwish song that I've heard. And I, I really liked hearing the guitar so crisp and clean. And and this, as opposed to some of the stuff I've heard with Floor, this one seemed a lot more guitar driven. And it was interesting to me, um, the the kind of breakdown near the end of the song. And and I when when it kind of changed to that breakdown part, I looked at the time because I was thinking, oh, there's probably gonna be two or three more minutes. It's like, oh, there's 20 more seconds. You know, and uh, instead of doing which and and it made me think too, like when did the the genty almost math rock kind of breakdown where you have to go doom doom do do you know, and you have this you know uh, really staccato you know rhythmic thing and and before when I've heard Nightwish, I've always liked that they didn't do the genre expectations it's not it's like they're not following the rule book which is cool uh because as a listener it 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 
that level of surprise and irony is what you you appreciate. You know, when, when you hear this, it's like, oh, I'm not going to get beat over the head with like 12, 12, six time. And yes, I know that doesn't make sense. <laughs> Actually, there's there's irrational <laughs> time signatures. So 12, six time can <laughs> could technically be a thing. Seriously, look, look it up on YouTube. There's several videos okay. on it. Irrational time signatures. <laughs> OK. <laughs> I don't yeah. know, I'm just making shit up. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, you know, um, I, I always like that they do something um, that, you know, put pushes outside the rules of the expectations of that genre. You know, yeah. because me as a listener that doesn't know a whole lot about the band, I can notice those things and go, oh, hey, that's that's cool that they're doing that. I, I get why people love this band that much, you know? The video mm-hmm. was pretty intense, too. It looked like it was telling some sort of a story when it wasn't doing their... Um, their their sh- their show you know showing the footage of them playing um, yeah. I'm not sure I have to watch it a couple more times to really try to get what the story is well, and everything yeah usually like uh like angels weeping blood it's kind of like a stigmata you know it's like a, a supernatural incarnation um, you know and and I don't know what amaranth means I always thought it was like a substance or something you know well it's, it's a, a stone okay it's a food too. Okay. Yeah. Well, I was thinking of amethyst, and I was thinking, well, I don't know, and that's mm. to me. I, you know, I'd need to look that one up to know what amaranth is. I'm sure someone in the comments would go, "You dummies, you don't know," you know. And well, <laughs> yeah. I know, I know amaranth as a grain. It's a rare okay. grain. It um, is. Yeah, but uh, it's also other things too. I'm sure it's a cool sounding word, if nothing else. Oh, <laughs> totally. <Yeah. laughs> it, it, it could be a cool neck tattoo, amaranth. You know, just. <laughs> It's cool ring to it. It's just, it's just like a, it's just some some muscly guy with like yeah. a fuck or a, uh, excuse me um uh, tribal tattoo uh, just like and it says amaranth I I don't know something like that. Khalifa coffee now with amaranth added. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Oh man! So that was that was really awesome. So now I can say that I've heard at least one song from all the different vocal eras of Nightwish, and I'm definitely going to be um, continuing both with the live shows I've been doing with Floor and and exploring the different eras too. Yeah. I love the band. Um, I love the concept of symphonic metal. It's it's different than prog, like metal prog metal, because I mean, I, and I, I don't want to say. It's not as complex because it is, but it's not as noty. Like when you have a guitar solo, right? Shredders tend to play more notes than Empu does. He plays a rehearsed written solo that's the same every time. And I'm not saying that the, the Shredders don't play the same solo every time. If, that, if that's what they do, they do. But, you know, it's not as, it's just not as many notes, right? As say a Dream Theater solo, right? Yeah, and it's that- just, it's the style. Right, everything's pre-composed exactly, and I know Dream Theater pre-composes exactly too, but they just do it with more notes. I guess is the word. Uh, the other thing is, I mean, even I think John Petrucci said this. He he kind of improvises live, which is just crazy. Like you're playing all these notes, but you're not. He's not. He never plays. No, this. no, yeah. no, dude, no. I've seen them played live twice. Uh, I, he, if he was improvising, he's using that word so loosely, dude. He played every single thing, note for freaking note for note for note, note note for note for note. And and I mean, maybe he was intending to improvise, but I'll tell you yeah. what, it came out exactly like the record. And that's a, that's just that's fair that, enough. That's him. <laughs> and you know, like one of the things I love watching, uh, tangent alert. I love watching was when um, I watched the video where Dream Theater was auditioning drummers for to replace Mike Portnoy. And um, it gave a real insight into the way they work because, you know, they were showing, like, they, they would just try to just jam with somebody. The, like, the way we write songs is somebody will come up with a riff and then they'll play it and then everybody will come in and add their part and we'll just jam and then, you know, we'll stop, talk about it, and then it morphs into a song, right? And so they had all these different drummers that came in, and they're like, hey, can you hang with this? Right? You know, and it was like, it was really neat. It was really neat to watch because um, they do improvise. Yeah. But it's, it's in the beginning process before the, it's written. And then once it's composed, then that's the classical. Then, okay, now it's like this forever. This is how it's going to be. 
And they even uh, make tracks. They always play along with tracks. At least right. at least since Metropolis, if not before. They've always played with tracks. So that means that they can't really improvise too much because if you make your guitar solo four bars longer, it throws the whole rest of the song off. True. I think they, um, on that note, that, that drummer, drummer video you're talking about, mm -hmm. I think that's one reason why they didn't uh, go with Marco Miniman. And mm -hmm. and they went with Mangini because Miniman was like he was he was all, I I would I would say he's like uh, maybe like one step above Mangini. I mean he's like well from a technical standpoint, but Mangini's no no slack of course. But yeah, I think because of that improv um, sort of like looseness. Yeah, I've said it before. I mean, I feel like Mike Portnoy left big shoes to fill, but it wasn't just the drum chops, which he's obviously incredible at. Um, I feel yeah. like Mangini's as good of a drummer when it comes to just drum parts. But, you know, when it comes down to, I mean, at least he can play the Portnoy parts, you know, right? For sure. Um, but then when it comes down to vocals, lyric writing, they lost a lot there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Not, they didn't really recover, I would say, until uh, Distance Over Time. I mean, that was the first record that I actually like liked all the way through as far as new Dream Theater goes. Other than that, I, I think it took them a bit of time to catch back up to where they were before um, Portnoy exited the band. I, I love the song On the Backs of Angels. That was the first song, the first track of the first album they had with Mangini. I really love that song to this day. <laughs> That, that that is a good that's a good track i i mean i i, I wasn't saying that i don't like yeah, yeah, yeah. any of it i know just... i know i'm just <laughs> thank you so much everybody for being here with me thank you eve thank you kyle for being my awesome guest everybody make sure you mash that like button please go over to their channels we're all just we're all just growing so much and it's because of you guys thank you so much this whole show is for you for your comments for your chats for your thumbs up and everything we really appreciate it and you know in addition to super chats, super stickers, um, make sure you check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash Matthew's Music Lesson Studio, where you can go ahead and sign up. You can request collaborations. You can request uh, covers. You can request, um, you know, uh, reactions, and you'll get uh, cut the line. The more you donate, the further ahead of the line you can jump. Please check out my website, matthewsmusiclessonstudio.com, where you can get music <laughs> lessons from me. And um, I can do voice, guitar, ukulele, and saxophone. And uh, songwriting, if you're interested in songwriting, music theory, all that kind of stuff. I can teach you about scales and chords and modes and whatever you want to learn. So, matthewsmusiclessonstudio.com. Make sure you like this video, share out the stream, and check out all of our websites. Links are in the description. I'll see you guys all next time. Time on the sound live. <laughs> yeah.